In this video, we're going to explore probability distributions. Now, a couple definitions to help us out. A random variable is going to be a numerical value associated with each outcome in our discrete probability experiment. Now, the other two terms, discrete and continuous variables, we've discussed before. Whereas discrete values focus on finite and countable outcomes, continuous focuses on the uncountable and measurable outcomes. For this section, we're going to look only at the discrete variables. First thing we look at is the discrete probability distribution. With this, we, want to, we have a list of all the possible values for a random variable together with its probability. Each probability has to be between 0 and 1, as per definitions of probability, and all of those probabilities have to add up to 1. So to create our probability distribution, we're first going to make a list of all of our outcomes. We're then going to find the frequency for each. We're going to find the probability or relative frequency. And then we're going to check to make sure all those relative frequencies add to 1. So let's look at an example. Say that there are 31 games a baseball team played in the month of August. And we want to know, we want to create the probability distribution for this and graph it. So first, is it discrete? Yes, because I am counting the number of runs. And I already have my frequency distribution provided. So I'm going to provide the third column, which is the relative frequency. So I know again there are 31 games that were played and I could add up my frequencies to get that. And I'm going to take each individual frequency and divide by the total. Now my last step is to double check and make sure that this does add up to 1. So I take my five values, add them together, and they are equal to 1. Once I graph it I use a histogram and I can see that probably on average it's looking like it's close to two runs are scored a game. And it is relatively symmetric and bell-shaped as well. Now we can also find the mean with a specific formula where we take each random variable, multiply it by its probability, and add all those values together. So let's look at the baseball example and use Excel to help us. So if I look in Excel, I have my random variables, my frequencies, my probabilities. So if I want to find the mean, I'm going to create another column where I take the random variable and I multiply it by its probability. And I'm going to do that for each of the different run scored options. To get my mean, I just add up all of those values. So I use the sum function. And I get 1.831 and keeps going but we could say that that's about 1.84 runs scored a game. Now we can also find the variance in standard deviation. And this is where Excel can definitely be helpful so that we don't get confused with each of the individual parts and we can let Excel use some of its power to help us out. So, because this is a relatively complex formula, just to remember and to get all the pieces in the right place. But what we do is we're gonna add up all the different values where we take the random variable, subtract the mean, square that, and then multiply by its probability. And then of course standard deviation is where we take the square root of that. So let's use again Excel to help us out. Now here's all the information we just had. And I'm going to take that formula and just take it piece by piece. First I'm going to take my random variable and subtract my mean and do that for each of my random variables. Next, oh, and as you can see, I forgot to do one important thing, which is I gotta lock my mean so that it is used in all the values. Next, I take my value I just found and I square it, so that's shift six to get the caret key, and I can put a two. I'm going to drag it down and get all the values. Now I'm going to take my squared term and multiply it by the probability of that event occurring. I'm going to do that for all of the number of possibilities as well. So to find my variance, all I have to do is add up those five values I just found. And the standard deviation, I take the square root 
of my variance. So what I could say is that on average, I'm, the team will score about 1.85 runs a game with a standard deviation around 1.15 runs. Now the last thing here is the expected value. The expected value is a value you would expect to get as you continue to do a large number of trials. Because this is only 31 trials, but say we want to spread it over the entire season where there's over 130, 150 games. So what we would expect is that the expected value will be equal to the mean. So in our case of the baseball game, if our mean was 1.84 runs, the expected value would be 1.84 runs as well.